today's social science class we are taking up history chapter number 4 opposition to british rule in karnataka and wadiyars of mysore after having politically taken the control of almost all indian states through wars negotiations and various cunning policies the british tried to exploit the farmers the traders and the common people the zamindar the rulers because of this the zamindars kings and palayars felt insecure about themselves the british unnecessarily started interfering in their local affairs try to exploit them this led to rebellion many zamindars and kings and rulers rebelled against the british they opposed the british rule in mysore and other local provinces in this chapter we learn about the famous wadiyars of mysore hyder ali and tipu sultan the four anglo mysore wars and important rulers among the wadiyars dondiyawag rebellion of kittor by rani chennamma and sangolli rayana rebellion of halgali bedas and rebellion of surapura the present karnataka was scattered among various provinces principalities before being integrated before being united apart from establishing political supremacy during the later part of 18th century the british exploited people in agriculture and trade in order to protect their own interests these exploitations created insecurities across karnataka the local king suffered insecurities as a result rebellions against the british happened in most of the karnataka in the beginning the zamindars and the kings battled against the british individually without attaining any unity among themselves wadiyars of mysore 1399 to 1947 after the fall of vijayanagara empire its traditions and the last glory was revived and continued by the wadiyars of mysore the wadiyars of mysore continued the glory of vijayanagara empire vijayanagara empire after its fall hadinadu a pale pattu near mysore town was ruled by chamaraja a feudatory of sheringa patana mandalika he died without any sons and dalavai maranayaka of karugalli looked after its administration after the death of <coughs> the pale pattu hadinadu ruled by chamaraja he was a feudatory of sheringa patana he died without any issues any sons and the dalavai maranayaka of karugalli administered it and he demanded the princess in marriage to him he meant he demanded that the princess be married to him but nobody agreed for it around the same time yaduraya with his brother krishnaraya 
from Dwaraka of Gujarat came to Mysore. Coincidentally, Yaduraya and his brother Krishnaraya from Dwaraka of Gujarat came to Mysore. Voluntarily, Yaduraya came to help the Maharani and killed Maranaika. This pleased the Maharani who gave her daughter in marriage to him. Thus, the Vodar dynasty was started. Who started the Vodar dynasty? Yaduraya and his brother Krishnaraya who came from Gujarat, Dwaraka started the Vodar dynasty. This Vodar dynasty was ruled by 25 Vodayars starting from Yaduraya to Chamaraja Vodayar. Let us now understand some of the important Vodayars. Raja Vodayar, 1578 and 1617. The credit of expanding the small Palayapattu into a large Mysore goes to him. Srirangapattana was captured from the representatives of Vijayanagara and made it as his capital. Further, the surrounding areas were occupied and expanded his kingdom. He revived, renovated the temples of Srirangapattana, Mysore and Melukote. Rajamudi, the crown, was offered to Lord Chalavarayana Swami by him. He also started the Navaratri festival in Mysore. We call it as Dasara festival. So the Dasara festival or the Navaratri festival in Mysore was started by him. Chikadeva Raja Vodayar 1673-1704 Chikadeva Raja Vodayar was an efficient soldier and administrator. He checked the invasion attack of Shivaji at Madurai, Ikeri and Bijapur. He captured Magadi, Madhugiri, Kortegari and other places. He purchased Bangalore from the Mughal military general. He had the titles like Karnataka Kavichakravarti, Apratima Veera, Tenkana Raja and Navakoti Narayana. He started the Council of Ministers which was called Athara Kacheri to help in the administration. The postal system came into being during his time. A dam was constructed across river Kaveri and Chikadevaraja and Dodarevaraja canal were also constructed for irrigation. He also patronized. He also gave shelter to many poets like Thirumalaraya, Sanchiya Hunnamma and so on. Hyder Ali and his son Tipu Sultan 18th century in Indian history is considered as the century of political problems. In the Indian history, 18th century is considered to be the century of political problems. This question has appeared in March 2019 examination. There are many reasons for this. Death of Aurangzeb, the Mughal Emperor, in 1707 was the main reason. His death weakened the Mughal Empire. As a result, the Mughals lost political control over South India. A lot of political struggles took place in Karnatic region. Before this, the death of Chikadeva Raja Odeyar in 1704 
created various political challenges in Mysore state. Chikadevaraj Odeyar was a very prominent Odeyar ruler who ruled the state of Mysore. And his death created problems of succession and administration. So after his death, there appeared problems of his succession. Who should succeed him? And who should look after the administration? All these developments clouded the politics of Mysore. Hyderli gained prominence in this scenario of uncertainty that clouded over Mysore and Karnataka region. Hyder Ali soon became popular in using arms and experiments. He undertook the invasion of the forces by active military operations and suppressed the Dalavais. He imprisoned Krishnaraja Odeyar too and kept him under house arrest and took over the power. He became famous as Nawab Haider Ali in a short time. This situation was timely utilized by both the French and the English for their political power. The first Anglo Mysore War 1767-1769 The first Anglo Mysore War started in 1767 and ended in 1769. The prominence gained by Hyderli in the south was not tolerated by the, the British Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad. Hyderabad had become very prominent, very strong. So it was not tolerated by the British, the Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad. Hence, the British started devising cunning plans to defeat Hyderli whom they saw as impedance, obstacle for their expansionist ideas. Though Hyderli suffered due to the Maratha aggression, he made attempts to have Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad on his sides, but with little success. He was not successful. The first Anglo Mysore War. The British entered into an agreement with Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad against Hyderali. So a tri-party alliance emerged in which three parties, the Nizam of Hyderabad, the Marathas and the British. But Hyderali with his manipulative ideas was successful in breaking the alliance. He also created enmity and distrust among Marathas, Nizam of Hyderabad and the British. Meanwhile, in the meantime, political disturbances emerged in Arcot. In 1767, Hyderali and Nizam of Hyderabad attacked Arcot. But the king of Arcot had an alliance with the British. So the war started with this incident. The battles took place in Tiruchurapalli, Tiruvannamali, Ambur and other places. Hyderali organized lightning attacks in the battles. The British military captured a few places. Hyderali suffered few setbacks. The British military from Bombay joined the war. Hyderali considered the war as a challenge to his personal power and he continued with the war. 
His army reached Madras by 1769 and this created panic among the British. Inevitably, without go, the British entered into an agreement with Hyder Ali through Madras Treaty. The first Anglo-Mysore War ended by signing the Madras Treaty. Second Anglo-Mysore War, 1780 and 1784. We know the First Anglo-Mysore War ended with the Madras Treaty. The Madras Treaty had put the political developments in South India on a temporary hold. The British attempted to break the Madras Treaty when Madhavarao, the Maratha, attacked Srirangapatana with his Maratha army. Hyderabad expected the British support him in as per the Madras Treaty, but the British rejected the request of Hyder Ali and went against the Madras Treaty. Mahi, the French colony was under the hold of Hyder Ali. Mahi was a French territory, it was a French colony, but it was under the control of Hyder Ali. The British attacked Mahe and captured it. So this became the reason, cause for Second Anglo-Mysore War. The Second Anglo-Mysore War started in 1780. In the beginning, Hyderli gained upper hand. He captured many forts of Karnataka region and Kanchipuram. Mysore army reached till Coromandel beach, Coromandel coast. The British became worried. Hyderli really attacked Orcott and captured it. He also threatened to attack Vandy Wash and Velour. An army was kept standby by the British and it was led by Sir Ayer Coote. He followed Hyder Ali's army till Pondicherry. The French refused to support Hyder Ali against the British. Now Hyder Ali changed his war plan, changed his war strategy with all these developments. He attacked the regions under British control and captured a large booty of arms and wealth a large booty of weapons and even wealth. Taider Ali was defeated in the battle, the battle held in Porto Nova by the British. So this increased the confidence of the British and changed the course, changed the direction of the battle. But they suffered financial setbacks in Polilur and Sholingur. In the meanwhile, by entering Salavai Agreement, the British were successful in winning over Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad to their side. We know that uh, the First Anglo-Maratha War ended with the Salavai Agreement. So, with this agreement, the British were successful in winning over the Marathas in the Nizam of Hyderabad on their side. In the meanwhile, Hyder Ali died due to illness during the war and the second Anglo-Mysore war was led by his son Tipu Sultan.
Tipu Sultan was waging war in Malabar region when Hyder Ali died. The British tried to take advantage of Hyder Ali's death by attacking, by invading Mangalore and Bidhanur. They also tried to instigate the rulers of Calicut and Malabar regions against Tipu Sultan. Tipu Sultan thought of all these developments and decided to protect Mangalore and coastal regions and he defeated the British. The Second Anglo-Mysore War ended with the Treaty of Mangalore in 1784. Tipu Sultan Tipu Sultan felt that British are a major hurdle, a major obstacle for his policy of expansion. So, he tried to drive them out seriously. He became the ruler of Mysore after Hyderli's death. He understood the cunning policies of the British. He considered it as his duty to drive the British out of India. He waged war against the British throughout his 17 years of rule. Tipu had clearly understood the cunningness, the strategies, the plans, the clever manipulations of the British. He very clearly knew what sort of people are the British. He knew that hurting the business interest of the British would weaken the political strength of the British. Tipu thought of hurting the business interest. He wanted that British should be made to suffer financial loss, loss in business. Only then we can weaken the political strength of the British. So he tries to organize the enemies of the British into one group. He tried to break the monopoly of the British over trade with India. These attempts further angered the British and their enmity with Tipu Sultan grew up. Third Anglo Mysore War 1790 and 1792. The politics of Travancore was the main reason for this war. The politics of Travancore was the main reason for the Third Anglo-Mysore War. The King of Travancore built a fort in Kochi with the help of the British and captured Ayakota and Kanganur forts from the Dutch. All these were the clear breach of Mangalore Treaty. You know that the Second Anglo-Mysore War ended with the Bang Mangalore Treaty. So this were the breach, breaking of Mangalore Treaty. The British captured Karwar, Coimbatore, Dindigal and other regions under the leadership of a British officer by name Meadows. Tipu entered the region of Baramahal and captured Satyamangalam. He later attempted to capture Tiruchurappalli but failed. Meanwhile, Lord Karnavalis took over the leadership of the British army and this changed the course of the war. The British army captured Kolar, Hosokote and rushed towards Bangalore under the leadership of Lord Karnavalis. 
the army captured Bangalore and destroyed the fort. After capturing Bangalore, Karnavali sought the help of Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad with the intention of defeating Tipu. The war took another conclusive turn with the joining of Marathas and Hyderabad forces with the British. The Marathas captured Savanur, Gajendragad, Lakshmishwara, Hubballi and other places. The Combined Army The Combined Army of the British, the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas Army marched towards Srirangapatna by capturing fort after fort in 1792. The Srirangapatna fort was destroyed during night. Disturbed by these developments, Tipu tried to enter an agreement with the British. It was inevitable for him. There was no other alternative for him because he was alone. But the enemies were three in number. The British, the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas. Since he was left alone, he had to enter into an agreement with the British. Tipu signed the Treaty of Sri Patana in 1792 and this treaty had unfavorable conditions as far as Tipu was concerned. So the Third Anglo-Mysore War came to an end with the Treaty of Sri Patana. In this treaty, the British were successful in inserting unfavorable conditions in order to weaken Tipu. What were those unfavorable conditions? In the Treaty of Sharing of Patana of 1792, Condition number one, according to the treaty, Tipu was forced to part with half of his kingdom. So as per the treaty, condition number one, Tipu was forced to give up half of his kingdom to the British. Condition number two, Tipu was forced to pay 3 crore rupees as war damage fee and Tipu had to pledge surrender two of his children as a guarantee against the payment and Tipu was also forced to release the prisoners of war so these were the unfavorable conditions inserted by the British in the Treaty of Sharing of Patana, 1792. After this treaty, the British withdrew the combined army from Sharing of Patana. This is the attack on Srirangapatana and the destruction of the fort. M. Tipu surrendering his two children to the British. The Fourth Anglo-Mysore War We know Tipu had to forcibly enter into the Sri Patana Treaty 
in which he lost half of his kingdom, half of his territory. He had to pay 3 crore rupees as war damage fee. He had to pledge two of his sons and to release the prisoners of war. Tipu took the defeat in Third Anglo-Mysore War personally. He took it very seriously. He paid all the dues, whatever dues were there. He paid all the dues and got his children released. He also gave away the territory to the British and its allies as agreed. And after that, he claimed his right over the Malabar regions under British occupation. Malabar region was under the British control and Tipu claimed his right over the Malabar region. But British refused this argument. Lord Wellesley, who was the Governor General of India at that time in 1798, political activities against Tipu became intensified during this period. Tipu's attempt to form an alliance of local rulers and his closeness with the French angered Lord Wellesley further. Tipu sent an ambassador to France to seek the alliance of the French. So all this engaged the British. They thought that an alliance between France and Tipu would threaten the existence of the British in India. Another treaty containing inhuman and impracticable conditions was forced upon Tipu. But Tipu rejected that. So his refusal to accept the treaty started the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. The Fourth Anglo-Mysore War started in 1799. The British were able to destroy the strong fort of Sri Lankapattana. Tipu died while fighting the British in 1799. With the death of Tipu, the British were so happy as if the whole India came under their rule. Most of the territories under Tipu's rule was shared among the British, the Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad. A small territory of Mysore was handed over to the royal representatives of Mysore Vodayars. And this region came to be known as the Mysore Princely State. Death of Tipu Sultan in 1799 during the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. When we visit Sri Lankapatana now, we can see an inscription there where the body of Tipu Sultan was found. And the map of Mysore princely state after the 4th Anglo Mysore War. Chamarajendra Vadayar 10 1885 1-1894 As per the promise made by the British, the Mysore throne was handed over to Chamarajendra Vadayar 10 in the year 1881. The commissioner's rule came to an end and a British resident was appointed. 
Along with C. Randacharlu was appointed as the Divan of Mysore. Divan Randacharlu was an efficient administrator and liberal minded. He established the Mysore Representative Assembly, gold mines in Kolar in 1881 and the Bangalore Mysore Railway Line in 1882 were also started. After the death of Ranga Charlu in 1883, Shesha Dreyer, K. Shesha Dreyer became the Divan of Mysore. K. Shesha Dreyer had a vast experience of having worked in different positions. He could understand all the problems. He improved the financial position of the state. He was responsible for many new railway lines. In order to select the talented youngsters for various administrative positions, he started the Mysore Civil Services Examination. He gave importance to, more importance to, irrigation. Special importance was given to girls' education by establishing Maharani's Girls' High School. Chamarajendra Udayar gave shelter to Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda, when he came to Mysore and also helped him to participate in the Parliament of World Religion at Chicago. As he had a love towards Kannada and Sanskrit, he gave shelter, he patronized many scholars. Basappa Shastri was an important scholar among them who had written many books and was also known as Abhinava Kalidasa and he had composed the Mysore State Anthem, the state of state anthem of Mysore called Kayo Sri Gauri. Kayo Sri Gauri was the anthem of Mysore composed by Abhinava Kalidasa Sri Basappa Shastri. Krishna Raja Vadeer 4, 1894 to 1940. The Queen Regent Vani Vilasa Sannidhana Kemparanjamani looked after the administration. He was helped by the Divans and the Advisory Council, which led for many developmental works. Reforms in gold mines, establishment of colleges, construction of Mari Kaniwe Reservoir, railways, hospitals, and hydroelectric project across Kaveri at Shivan Samudra were started during his regime. Electricity was supplied to Kolar Goldfield gold mines and also to Bangalore. Bangalore was the first city to be electrified in India in the whole country. Krishna Raja Odeyar assumed personal power in the year 1902. He was lucky to have the illuminary services of Divans like Divan P. N. Krishnamurti, V. P. Madhavarao, Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, Kantaraj Aras and Sir Albion Banerjee, Sir Mirza Ismail and others. He was very much interested in spreading education among his people. He abolished fees in all primary schools to develop primary education. He helped in girls education. He started the University of Mysore and also started scholarship to the students continuing education in foreign countries. In 1905, the Indian Institute of Science was established at Bangalore with the help of Sri Tata. It was then called the Tata Institute. Now it is called the Indian Institute of Science. 
special attention was given to the development of irrigation a barrage a small dam a barrage was constructed across river kaveri near belagula new railway lines were laid many small and large scale industries were started among them the iron and steel factory cement factory paper mills at bhadravati sugar factory at mandya sandal oil factory at mysore and soap factory at bangalore chemical and fertilizer factory at belagula and so on legislative council was formed which was a great step in the legislative measures krishna raj odair was a simple natured and efficient administrator he had a lot of interest towards fine arts and encouraged musicians like shyam shastri m hiriyanna vinay vina sheshanna sambhaya idaram krishnappa muttaya bhagavatar vasudeva acharya t chaudaya and others mysore at that time became a model state due to his administration mahatma gandhi called krishna rajavadi for as rajarshi chamaraja odayar 1940-1950 jai chamaraja odayar came to the throne after the death of krishna raja odayar 4 he had his education in general and special colleges he taught the world and got good knowledge He had the services of famous divans Divan Mirza Ismail Napti Madhavarao and Arkat Ramaswami Madaliyar He was a great scholar a musicologist orator and a great patron of literature and fine arts He had written number of books and also composed many devotional songs Chamaraja Odair became the governor of Mysore after India became independent. We will read about Dondiawag. Dondiawag was from Chanagiri. Major opposition to British rule from Karnataka. Dondiawag, 1800. don't you work many rebellions and protests against the british took place in karnataka after the death of tipu sultan and all these rebellions were armed rebellions they were fought with weapons arms and ammunition and took place during the first part of 19th century among them the rebellion led by don't you work is an important rebellion Dondiawag Dondiawag was born in a Maratha family of Chennai. He was very popularly called as the Wag which means the tiger due to his bravery. He started his career as a cavalry soldier in Hyderabad army and grew to the position of military general. Dondia built his own private army and fought along with Tipu Sultan. However, due to differences with Tipu, he was imprisoned, he was jailed. The British released him from prison after the 4th Anglo-Mysore War, that means after the death of Tipu Sultan. He built a small army 
and started his operations. He organized army with the unhappy soldiers of Tipu Sultan's army and the feudatory rulers who had lost power. He captured Bidanur and Shivamogga forts and made unsuccessful attempts to capture Chitradurga fort. Lord Wellesley tried to check this rebellion. An attack was organized on Shivamogga, Honali, Harihara and other places under the control of Dondia. Dondia lost his base. After the capture of Shikaripura, Dondia ran away towards Gutti, which was under the control of Nizam of Hyderabad. When the Nizam's army attacked Gutti, Dondia had to run towards the regions of Marathas. The Marathas army attacked him and captured most of his horses, camels and arms. In spite of these, he continued his warfare. Many unhappy Palagars encouraged Dondiawag. The French at the Mahe of Malbar also extended their support to him. The British army followed him in the vast area that included Harihara, Chitradurga, Shikaripura, Savanuru, Rani Bannur, Kistur and Londa. The British took over the Shirhati killed many followers of Dondiawak. End of Dondiawak Lord Wellesley decided to end the adventures of Dondiawak. He wanted to put an end to all the adventures of Dondiawak. The British now requested the help of local rulers. Dondia had captured, recaptured Shikaripura fort and he was scattered by the British army again. The British tried to defeat the army of Dondia which used to move in the area between Tungabhadra and Malaprabha. They attacked him from all the directions. He was followed by them when he left Raichur. When he was caught between Maratha army and Nizam's army, the British attacked him near Yalaparvi and killed him at Konagal. With the defeat of their leader, the followers of Dondia scattered. The British captured a large cache of arms and ammunition. The next rebellion in Karnataka was at Kittur. The rebellion of Kittur by the brave queen Rani Chennamma, 1824. Rani Chennamma, her fort which is now in a ruined stage. This is the ruins of Rani Chennamma's fort. Rani Chennamma on horseback and that is the prison where Rani Chennamma was kept when after her capture and it is where she died. The British brought in many changes in administration after defeating the Marathas, Tipu and Hyderabad. Denying the right of adopted children over the throne was one such rules. Students, we have already studied about this rule that is the policy of doctrine of lapse where the adopted children of the king, or the ruler, were refused the right to ascend the throne. 
So the rebellion led by Chennamma, the queen of Kittur, opposing this law is a prominent one. She opposed the policy of doctrine of lapse. Kittur lies between Dharwad and Belgaum. After the death of her husband, Mother Sarja, Chennamma, the queen, took active interest in the administrative matters. After the death of Malla Sarja, his son Shivalinga Rudra Sarja took over the control, the reign of Kittur. Due to his failing health, Chennamma had to take care of the day-to-day -day administration. Shivalinga Sarja supported the British during Maratha war. As a result, the British entered an agreement with Kittur and collected payment from him. This agreement was entered during the time of the British officer Thomas Munro. After the death of Shivalinga Rudra Sarja, Chennamma adopted a boy named Shivalingappa and started ruling Kittur as a queen regent. Then Thakre was the collector and political agent of the British in Dharwad. He sent a report to the governor of Bombay and attempted to take over the kingdom under the Doctrine of Lapse policy. We know Rani Chandamma had lost her own son Shivalingarudra Sarja after, after which she adopted a boy named Shivalingappa and started ruling Kittur as a queen regent. So by applying the policy of Doctrine of Lapse Collector Thakre sent a report to the governor of Bombay and based on the report, the British attempted to take over the kingdom under the Doctrine of Lapse policy. He attempted to take over the treasury and fort under his control. Chennamma considered war as inevitable. Chennamma now considered that there, there was no other alternative left other than waging a war. So she prepared for the war. Meanwhile, in the meantime, the British also prepared themselves for the war. So the war took place. In the battle, Collector Thackeray was shot dead. He was killed. Many British were taken as prisoners of war. The British attacked Kittur again under the leadership of Colonel Deacon. The army fought the battle very bravely. Chennamma now attempted to flee, escape, run away from the battlefield. But she was captured by the British army. Chennamma and others were imprisoned at Bailahongal fort. Queen Chennamma passed away in the prison. You can see on your right Bailahongal fort and the prison where Rani Chennamma was jailed and spent her last days and she died in the prison. Sangoli Rayana The name Sangoli Rayana has remained famous along with the name of Rani Chennamma. He fought for the independence of Kittur and felt it was his duty to liberate his motherland. Rayana fought against the British and was imprisoned 
along with her. There are many oral histories about Raina. Regarding Raina, there are much of oral histories because very less has been written about him. We do not find any written histories about Raina. So, about Raina, more of oral histories which are passed on from one generation to another generation, from one set of people to the other orally. According to that, he developed a sense of nationalism and went on organizing an army. Rayana organized secret meetings at very sensitive places. He aimed at looting the treasury and taluk officers of the British. Rayana had an army of 500 men. He became very furious. He became very angry with the villagers who were assisting the British army. The British thought that Raina was being instigated, provoked by Rani Chennamma. Therefore, hence, they shifted Chennamma to Kusugal prison from the Bailahongala prison. The British devised a cunning strategy, a cunning plan to capture Raina. They encouraged the Desais who were opposing Rani Chennamma. An Amaldar named Krishna Raja joined hands with the British. Thus, Raina was cunningly captured and brought down to Dharwada. Many of his soldiers surrendered after his arrest. Raina was declared as an offender and was hanged to death. Many ballads have kept the life and bravery of Raina alive even today. Many short songs comprising of the life story of Raina are even alive, even they are sung today. Students, on the right side of your screen, you will find a huge tree. It is a place where Rayana was hanged to death and uh, a memorial has been constructed by the authorities. Rebellion of Amarasulya This rebellion was primarily, basically, a farmer's rebellion, a revolt of the farmers. The Amarasulya rebellion needs to be understood in the background, in the backdrop of political situations which prevailed in coastal Karnataka and Kodogo regions during 1935-1835. 1837. The British dethroned, brought down from power, the British dethroned the ruler of Kodagu, Chikavira Rajendra. Chikavira Rajendra belonged to the Haveri dynasty in 1834. After dethroning Chikavira Rajendra from power, from his throne, he was transferred to Vellur through Bangalore and later shifted to Kashi. This incident created political instability in Kodagu. Swami Aparampara, Kalyana Swami and Puttabasappa organized a rebellion against this incident. All the three were declared 
that they are part of the Haleri dynasty that rule Kodagu. All the three of them declared that they are part of the Haleri dynasty that ruled Kodagu. Swami Aparampara assumed the leadership of the rebellion, but he was captured in 1834 and shifted to Bangalore. Similarly, Kalyana Swami was captured in 1837 and placed in Mysore prison. Puttapasappa The people of Lower Kodugu continued the rebellion after the capture of Kalyana Swami. Sulia, Bellare and Puttur The major places of Kenara region were part of Amarasulia. It is interesting to note that a farmer named Puttapasappa as Kalyana Swami. This Puttapasappa later presented himself as Swami Aparampara. When the two other leaders were captured and put in the prison, Puttapasappa presented himself as Kalyana Swami and Swami Aparampara to the people because people would get disappointed if their leaders were arrested they may be disappointed they may be demoralized and therefore Puttapasappa himself presented as Kalyana Swami and later as Swami Aparampara to keep the morale of the common people high this also notes the fluid nature of the rebellion. Puttapasappa took over the leadership of the rebellion. The rebellion started in hilly region. Puttapasappa organized the rebels and calmed down the people. He declared that tax on tobacco and salt will be withdrawn if the rebel government comes to power, if the rebel government assumes power. The rich farmers, the landowners and local chieftains, local chiefs were assured of this move. The capture of government office in Bellari was the first move, the first step in this rebellion. Puttabasappa killed an Amaldar who was known for his brutality. That Amaldar was very cruel. He was very brutal. So Puttabasappa killed that Amaldar. This further increased the popularity of Puttabasappa. This incident gained more support for the rebellion and the rebellion became more famous. The protesters, the rebels, marched towards Mangalore to capture it. The British were engaged in fortifying their fort in Mangalore. The rebels marched towards Mangalore through Pane Mangalore and Bantwal. There they looted the treasury and prison of Bantwal. The British sought, the British requested the army of Talacheri, Kannur and Bombay to quell, to disperse this uprising. On hearing this development, Puttapasappa and his associates fled, ran away towards Sulia. The British captured them with the help of people in Kodagu. Puttapasappa, Lakshmappa, Bangarasa, Kedambadi, Ramayagoda and 
ಗುಡ್ಡೆಮನೆ ಅಪ್ಪೇಗೌಡ ಅವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಡ್ ಟಿಲ್ ಡೆತ್ ದೋ ದ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೀ ದ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ದ ಲೆಜೆಂಡರಿ ಗುಡ್ಡೆ ಮನೆ ಅಪ್ಪಯ್ಯಗೌಡ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಫೈಟರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವರಪುರ ಆಂಡ್ ಕೊಪ್ಪಳ ಸ್ವರಪುರ ಆಂಡ್ ಕೊಪ್ಪಳ ಸ್ವರಪುರ Surapura is at 50 kilometers from the present Yadgir. This was an important place since the rule of Mughals. This was an important since the rule of Mughals. During the reign of Nizam of Hyderabad and Marathas, it became a vassal state. It became a subordinate state. later most of the territory was lost and surapura remained limited restricted to a smaller territory during the reign of venkatappa during the regime during the rule of venkatappa it raised a rebellion against the british this was venkatappa nayaka of surapura and these are the present ruined images of the surapura fort venkatappa nayaka of surapura venkatappa came to the throne after the death of his father krishna nayaka so venkatappa nayaka was the son of krishna nayaka he came to the throne after the death of his father krishna nayaka venkatappa nayaka was born in 1834 and came to the throne in an early age when he came to the throne he was a very young boy his ascendance his coming to the throne was opposed by krishna nayaka's brother pedda nayaka krishna nayaka's brother pedda nayaka opposed venkatappa nayaka ascending the throne this resulted in internal fights in internal struggles at this point of time the british interfered in the affairs of surapura in 1842 the british appointed an english officer by name mido styler as their resident and thereby gained proxy power over surapura even though the there were original rulers but the actual power was being handled by the british Mido Taylor was a reformist he was not a conservist so after becoming the resident he tried to br- bring some reforms some good changes so mido taylor developed surapura princely state he took interest in developing the surapura princely state and pedda nayaka was appointed as the diwan of surapura the diwan of the state and terror also conducted land survey of the kingdom and as a result the revenue of the state increased due to the measures implemented by terror he also took measures to educate venkatappa nayaka properly and he came to power in 1853 
द रेबिलियन ऑफ सुरपुर द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट वॉज ऑब्जर्विंग द वेरियस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सुरपुर इन एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन इट एम टू बी नोटिस ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दैट द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ नाना साहेब और प्रेजेंट इन सुरपुर students we will be reading about nana saheb in the coming chapters of history in the lesson the first war of independence 1857 and nana saheb was one of the leaders of the revolt of 1857 and nana saheb happens to be the adopted son of peshwa bajaj rao second the last maratha peshwa so the british came to know that nana saheb representatives are present in surapur this made the british suspicious of the king's intentions they doubted the king's intention the british appointed an officer named campbell to report on various activities of the king the officer submitted a report to the resident of hyderabad that the king is involved in mal administration venkatappa nayaka is usually presented as the leader of 1857 revolt in karnataka by the historians The British army captured Surapura in 1858. The war continued, but there is confusion regarding Venkatappa Nayaka's end. It means historians have not found definite evidence regarding how the life of Venkatappa Nayaka ended. Virappa of Koppala Another rebellion in Karnataka was led by Virappa of Koppala The Koppal rebellion is an important rebellion against the British which took place in Karnataka The Koppal and surrounding regions were under the rule of the nizam of hyderabad there were exploitations people were being exploited by the british this enraged a few zamindars who revolted who rebelled against the nizam virappa is an important person among the rebels Virappa who was a zamindar rebelled against the british and occupied the fort of Koppal and other forts in the vicinity he occupied the fort of Koppal and some other forts nearby in the vicinity many farmers and zamindars supported after realizing his intentions his motives the british contacted the nizam and employed their army to defeat virappa virappa who had lesser soldiers died fighting the british army after his death the british captured back the koppal fort though this rebellion was short lived do this rebellion was very short one but virappa proved himself to be a good warrior to be a brave warrior rebellion of bedas of halagali rebellion revolt of the bedas 
the hunters of Halagali. Halagali is a small village of Mudhol Taluk of Belagam district. Halagali was a part of the Mudhol Principal Polity, Mudhol Princely State. In 1857, the British banned the usage of weapons. The British banned use of weapons. The Bedas, the hunters, who always kept guns as a part of customs, and the Bedas were very good hunters. Hunters usually carry weapons always, but carrying and use of weapons was banned by the British. So they rebelled against the British when these Bedas were asked to surrender their firearms. Here, the Bedas of Manturu, Budani, Alagundi and neighboring villages joined the Halagali Bedas in the rebellion. The British army entered Halagali village to suppress the rebellion. They suppressed the Bedas in a very inhuman way. All the rebels were caught and they were hanged to death. So that was the rebellion led by the Bedas, the hunters of Halagali. Students, that is the end of history chapter number 4, Opposition to British Rule in Karnataka and Warriors of Mysore. In our next class, we shall take up another chapter in another area. Till such time, please take care of yourself. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.